What's going on guys? My name is Fat Pento and today I'm going to bring you my Blade and Soul beginner and returning player guide. So I'm going to take you through kind of all the steps that each uh, class of player kind of goes through towards the game. And then we're going to get you all the way through to getting about uh, mid-tier legendary gear. So uh, let's jump right into it. So first we're going to start with uh, create a class or creating a character. So uh, people ask what character or what class should I play? It doesn't matter. Uh, there, just know that there are some race specific, uh, classes that you can play. For example, Lin is the only class that can, or the only race that can be Summoner or, um, Astromancer or Blade Dancer. And then there's other classes that, um, you, uh, that are only specific to the Jin, Gon, Yun, etc. Uh, so, uh, to be able to test out these classes, there's actually kind of a cool method. Uh, so if you just create a character, um, you can just go through the process, uh, name it, whatever the heck you want, and then make sure you click start at level 50 and just hit confirm. So you, you won't be able to play the main game with this character, but you are able to go into the Hong Moon training room, which is basically a testing ground to uh, try out all the skills. Uh, I highly recommend you do this, uh, especially if you're new and you don't know which class you want to play. So once you get through all the little training bits, you can click here to select training. Um, go to any boss you want. I'm just going to do Sacred Longwai. And basically you can just, you know, test out all the skills. Um, and yeah. Um, you know, just get a feel for the class and see if you like it, see if you don't like it. Uh, you can even press the K menu and switch over to the other specialization. Um, first, you have to hit retry. Um, you can go click to the other specialization and apply that and see if you like this specialization more or less than the other one. Um, it is important to figure out which specialization you like because uh, that's going to matter pretty much for endgame. So, um, once you're done with that, uh, what you're going to do is create, go back to change character. And then if you like the character, you can, uh, you go and create it as a new character. Um, but to try another class, you, what you're going to want to do is click delete character, type in delete, and then, um, that's, that's, uh, what's going to happen. It's going to delete. There's a five minute cooldown. Um, but since you have two slots, you can uh, try one, and then during the deletion time, uh, make a new one with a different class to try it out. Um, another cool thing you can do is you can download what are called presets for a character. Uh, Blade and Soul has pretty intricate create a class, and you can play around with it yourself. But if you're lazy or you really like a design, you can uh, download a uh, one from the internet. So... Um, this site that I really like, Longwai, all you're going to want to do is go into the menu and then categories and click whichever uh, race you want to play. For example, we're going to do Jin Mail here. And, um, where the heck? Oh, okay, there we go. We're going to do Jin Mail. And you're looking for uh, a picture that has this uh, gray blue background on it. You're going to want to click Save Image As. And you're going to save it in this PC, Pictures, Blade and Soul, and Character Customize. If there isn't a Character Customize folder, it doesn't matter. Just create Save and create it. And then, so since I picked a Jin Mail, if I click here. And then go to Manage Appearance. Click on it. And it'll apply. And you can do this inside game. You don't have to close it or anything. So you can see how it looks in game as well. Alright, so the quickest way to level up in this game is just by doing the yellow quests. Um, these are the main story quests and they give you the most amount of levels. Um, so you're just going to want to do this all the way through to Act 11 Chapter 7. That is where the current uh, story ends and it'll put you, uh, it'll give you a pretty decent amount of gear. Um, but that is fine because we're going to replace it pretty quickly. Also, in addition to the uh, yellow quests, you're going to want to do the orange quests as far as you can go. 
uh, these unlock the raid dungeons and also the weekly dungeons that you're going to want to keep doing every week. And in addition to those, you're going to want to do purple wind walking quests. I don't have one on this character. She's already done it all. Um, but the, you're just going to want to do all the purple quests that you can um, to get you more stamina. Stamina is how you run. The more stamina you have, the longer you can run. Uh, current max is 40,000. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And hey guys, post-production Bento here. I just had a quick little thing I forgot to mention, and that is Hong Moon levels. So Hong Moon levels, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm actually level 13. These are uh, Hong Moon levels are basically an over-leveling system. Um, every time you level up after level 60, that uh, you'll get some points uh, to distribute however you like. So if you press P on the keyboard, um, you'll pull up this menu. This is the Hong Moon points. Um, and you get five for each level you are over 60. So at 13, you get 60, 65. Uh, I have this extra Hong Moon point, which I believe you get from the story. For new players, I definitely recommend going 20 points in defense and then the rest in offense. Gives you some nice AP, gives you HP, and uh, it'll basically help you survive pretty much everything in the game. Uh, yeah, so that's all we're going to talk about. Uh, back to the video. Um, from there, uh, once you get to the end of the story, you'll have similar gear to this, not exactly it. Um, but uh, once you get to the end of the story, that's where the real uh, questions start coming up. Um, the first thing I you're going to want to do is to go into your quest letters and go down to Call of the Realms, and you're going to find a quest called Taking Refuge. It's going to take you to Celestial Basin and then to Moon Refuge. Moon Refuge um, is going to be where you spend a lot of your time uh, fresh out of the story. And uh, it's very, very useful and uh, even more so for the strategy that we're going to be using to gear up as quickly as possible. So I'll talk to you when we get there. Okay, so now that we're in Moon Refuge, we're going to go over the first main thing that you're going to want to do as a new player, and that is your daily challenge. So daily challenge, basically, you do three quests from this menu here, and you'll get these rewards. Uh, they contain materials, they contain uh, experience charms, and other useful items that you're going to want to get and utilize throughout your time playing. Um... The first one, one of them, is located here in Move Refuge, called a Mid Bummer Night's Dream. So if you just accept this, um, what we're really after here is the Marshall Tokens. So you'll see three quests a day that give you the Marshall Tokens. It'll be the Mid Bummer Night's Dream, the Final Training, and uh, all the way down, Coldrax Lair, the Dragon's Lair. So these coins can be used to exchange for... Uh, pretty awesome items, but we'll talk about more of those in a second. I just want to talk to you about why we're in Moon Refuge first. The so Moon Refuge, the the other thing that these quests will give you is uh, Moonlight Buds. Uh, they won't give them you directly. They'll use... Uh, there's two things you need to do. So you're going to need... So the Mid Bummer Night's Dream Quest gives you the Starlight Powder. Uh, you're going to want to use these in tandem with the the item you get from another quest called Zavnar Zeal. Like I said, it's in the J menu, uh, all the way down here, Zavnar Zeal. This box that it gives you, the Moonlight Chest, uh, gives you is what actually has the Moonlight Buds in them. But what you're going to want to do every single time, or as many times as you can, is combine that with the uh, Starlight Powder from the daily quest and to get this Starlight Chest. You'll get more Moonlight Buds, there's a chance for a gold drop and a chance for an experience drop. So that's what we're going to want to use and get in Moon Refuge. So there's two things I really recommend, two and a half things that I recommend you can get from New Moon Refuge. Um, one is the uh, Fallen Soul Shield chest. Uh, you'll have the full um, Skybrick Spire Soul Chest, uh, Soul Shield set. But this is a nice upgrade and it enhances a lot of the skills for a lot of classes. So I highly recommend you pick it up. But 
it's very expensive as you can probably see 340 for each for the piece eight and then each one is a little bit less um it'll take a lot of time but that's why we want to get those uh big tier chests to get more moonlight buds um in addition to that you can also get gems here gems if you don't know are things that slot into your weapon they're basically just straight dps boosts so you can get these triangular gems and this uh heptagonal diamond um the only thing about these is that these are not the upgradable versions so these are the ones that are not account bound this one right here for example is an account bound chest and our account bound gem and that means i can trade it to all my other characters but uh this one is not so that means i can only use it on this specific character these gems are similar so uh you can pick them up if you want uh they're nice dps boosts and especially at a uh, gilded triangular they, they don't really need to be upgraded so you can pick them up if you want but they are expensive 400 uh, moonlight buds but they're if you have the buds or um because you're going to get them by doing these every day uh because you're going to want to do moon refuge every single day um because like i said what we're after are quests with the marshall tokens marshall tokens are used to in the dragon express buy a lot of really really good catch-up items so what you're gonna want to need what you need to do is you need to get the um masterwork mastercraft exalted weapon chest stage nine the legendary soul badge chest and a legendary mystic badge chest now this one's fairly straightforward you just pick the exalted because it's generally better for most classes uh but and it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be using it for that long for the soul badge and legend and mystic badge chest what i recommend you do is join the laden soul raid recruitment or not raid recruitment this is blade soul academy's discord um and you'll go in you'll be able to select what classes you want to look at or or just all of them and for example i'm on my archer so if i click archer and then go into the pinned messages uh they're all pretty sorted um and you're gonna want to figure out which spec you want to play so for example i'm playing the Lightbringer, so i'll go to a pin here and it'll give me all the information i need uh where how i distribute the skills bracelet badge and a uh, mystic badge and all that jazz sometimes they were they're uh compiled into a google doc depends on who's running the uh the uh, the channel um but this is where a good place to get all your information for, about your class from doing the just these three daily quests the uh mid bummer night stream this is a uh, final training which is mushin's tower floor uh seven uh you'll go there during the story so it'll be very very easy to find and then coldrax lair uh coldrax lair you get uh is actually a 12-man dungeon but it's only open during certain times of the day so to look when it will be open for you you click alt go to the time and then it'll say it'll say epic challenge so for me the next time the epic challenge is open is at midnight so uh doing that um uh, will get will reward you with three uh martial tokens each quest gives you three and you'll need a total for the items that we're buying of 35 for the weapon 35 for the weapon 20 for the soul badge and 20 for the mystic badge that's a total of 75 it is it uh, if you do all three quests for every day uh it'll take you eight and a half days so you'll need to do an additional quest on the ninth day um to get to that uh 75 number but if you end up not doing if you don't want to do one of them say you don't want to do coldrax layer because you just can't play when you are uh when the time for it is there uh it'll take you uh, about 12 and a half days uh getting only six so that's where we need to be that's where their plan is to be is to get the um the weapon the mystic badge and the soul badge um but from there i actually would not recommend you stop doing uh these quests because as you can see the martial tokens can buy uh, other items like you can get octagonal gems which is a step below 
those gems you can get uh, from the Moon Refuge Moonlight Buds. But they're still a nice DPS increase. And, uh, but they're still the type that are only available on one character. So you can get those if you want. What I recommend you get with your excess martial tokens is the transformation stone crystals, because these are what you're gonna want to what you're gonna need to switch your weapon over from the uh, PVE path, which is where Exalted will put you, over to the raid path, the Aransu. This upgrade is going to take a lot of time, and it's going to take you. Um, it's gonna cost a lot of money, but. Don't worry about it. This is a Korean MMO. You either spend a bunch of time or you spend a bunch of real life money. So uh, take that if you will. So for this upgrade to move over from the raid to or move to the raid path, you're going to need four items, five items. Actually, you're going to need the Hive Queen uh, material. You can get this by going into F5. Um, this is the marketplace. And for example, I need Hive Queen Barb. Um, okay, well, it's Hive Queen's Barb. You gotta actually be, um, Hive Queen. Yeah, okay. So, just type in Hive Queen, and you can get the selection chest. It's very cheap, two gold right now. Excuse me. And, um, it's very cheap, and you'll just need to open it and select the reward that you need um the next item which will be the imperium spirit stones are about 200 gold on the market right now i believe um let me double check yeah they usually hover around 200 gold um yeah so pick them up as you will you can also craft these um from the joining the soul wardens but um, you need to join that guild and level it up to, I believe, max before you do that. So it's either you invest time in the, the um, crafting guild or you just buy it with gold. So there's that. Um, these Hive Queen hearts you can obtain from getting from the actual raid dungeon itself. Uh, this will take a lot, a lot, because 66 is a lot. And I believe they drop probably three to five a run so it'll take you a little while to get these um but they're well worth it and if you do it on other characters they are account bound that's what the little uh player icon in the top right corner means so if you do it on other characters you can trade them over and get those that way uh these silver scale fragments you'll get by doing other dungeons which i'll talk about in just a second and um the transformation stones, like I said, you can get them with martial tokens, or you can track craft them in the transmute menu, and uh, those cost uh, regular dungeon mats. Um, I I can uh, not recommend either way, um, which is better because I mean you can buy you can also buy these from the market uh, as premium tra as transformation stones for about twelve gold each, and then you process them into the um other materials so uh it's up to you do you want to spend your gold or do you want to spend your materials um i personally think you should do as many as you can with the marshall tokens but uh you're gonna need more either way um just a side note i don't know how long this special event quest lasts or these um the special event with the marshall tokens last so prioritize getting your weapon, soul badge, and mystic badge as quickly as possible, and then use the extras if you have them for the transformation stone crystals. Um, so once we're there, we're gonna at the end of the story, we're gonna have these uh oh the oh, Dragon King's energy accessories. So the Destiny Ring, Immortality Earring, Oath Necklace, and Eternity Belt. Actually, you're going to get uh a little bit more than that you'll end up with the horizon belt uh from a chest that you will get as well as the king's gloves um and you'll also get a uh, bracelet that is specific to your class um specific to your class and the one you're going to want to use is specific to your spec uh that will also be in the uh in your class specific blade and soul academy discord server so um 
basically uh tldr is if you're playing spec one you want divine dragon if you're playing spec two generally you want tiger if you're playing third spec you want phoenix bracelet so that's where we're at we have all those accessories and what do we do now um the first thing i would recommend doing every week or at every possible tuny possible opportunity is skybreak spire that is this dungeon right here uh it's a raid dungeon and you'll notice that it drops two accessories the skybreak ring and skybreak earring these are better earrings for uh for every class pretty much um and they're nice nice uh dps upgrades and they're relatively easy you're going to want to do skybreak spire for both the accessories and the gold because skybreak spire still gives 50 gold for a run and it's stupid simple you can basically just brain dead dps um what people will do generally is uh recruit for them in faction chat uh, i believe i saw one right here this guy skybreak spire all you're going to want to do is right click and click apply to party and hopefully they'll let you in um generally the people who run this are doing it for the gold so they don't really need the accessories so you can just pick them up after the chest drops the first boss is the chest that bought that drops uh the ring and the second chest the second boss drops the earring and the third boss uh is 50 50 so it just depends um what you need and but if you're if you want to make sure you won't secure it you can maybe dm the raid leader and be like hey uh if nobody needs these can you make sure you give them to me and they'll generally say yes probably um so that's one thing you're going to want to do every week the second thing you're going to want to do every week is your weekly challenge uh weekly challenges are not that difficult they're basically tuned down versions of raid boss dungeons or of the raids um raid bosses so uh they're pretty simple you can basically brain dead dps them and uh yeah some of them are are helpful to know mechanics for them but not that bad same thing the way you find them like this guy right here is recruiting in faction chat uh you just right click apply to party and you'll be able to do it now you'll see you'll notice that i actually don't have these unlocked like i said before uh they are gotten by doing the uh orange quests the ones specifically you're going to want to do are the emperor's tomb and temple of succession as well as the silver steel one but that weekly dungeon is a little bit too high gear for us right now so don't worry about that one too much just do the temple of succession and emperor's tomb orange quests as far as you can go um and that unlocks both the raid and the weekly quests. Hey guys, post-production Bento once again. Uh, I know I probably confused some of you by talking about the orange quests, um, saying that you should do the orange quests, all of them, or only the one specifically for the, um, for the weekly dungeons. So what I meant to say in that video are... Um, is that you should do all of them you should do all the orange quests as much as you can because it unlocks all the raid dungeons but the ones that specifically unlock the weeklies are the emperor's tomb and the temple of succession quests uh, i believe you need to get to about level or chapter seven or eight for those to unlock but um basically go through each orange quest until it tells you that you need to enter the raid and that will be as far as you need to unlock anything else uh including the weeklies and including the actual raid dungeon itself so sorry about that but hopefully that uh correction helps you out so from there um we've been doing our dailies we've been doing our weeklies and we've been doing skybreak spire so what you'll notice um so it all towards the goal of moving this guy from exalted nine to a ronsu nine um like I said, uh, some people will carry you through uh, the uh, Temple of Alluvium. This one, that's where you'll get those uh, Hive Queen's hearts. And those are going to be able to... Uh, you're going to be able to... You'll need those to change over. Um, the other thing you can do is, if you're doing dungeons a bunch, is um, 
go into the Skyforge, which will be the next tier up. But to the cost from moving over to Aransu 9 is a little bit steeper, but the DPS um, difference between this and this is pretty significant, and you'll still you'll want to stick in the raid path generally for your weapon. Um, other than that, um, I recommend doing between three and five daily challenges every single day, um, especially because uh, you'll get good materials. Um, so in your, if you do these three quests, that means you only have to do, uh, for the martial tokens, it means you only have to do two more additional quests. Um, generally do the purple ones. These are the dungeons that you can search for in F8. If you go into F8 and click dungeon, you'll find people recruiting for these specific dungeons, or you can recruit for them yourself. Um, some of them I would recommend you, uh, ask, uh, like, recruit for yourself and, uh, try and get someone to carry you. So, for example, uh, generally when you're, you're going to be around 4, 1300, 1400 AP. So, uh, if you want to do Brood Chamber, for example, Brood Chamber is a daily quest today. Just, uh, type in, uh, you, you do the, the lobby and just be like, carry me please and generally people will join because uh it's pretty quick gold it's i think it's like 12 gold and you know it's generally pretty worth it um these dungeons will drop uh specific orbs that you're gonna want to do when i'm gonna want to use i don't have them um one second i will just go to where we will use the orbs and explain them further. All right, so um, when you go to Mushin's Tower, you're gonna wanna talk to this girl. Her name's Jensore. Um, she will have a lot of the uh, dungeon uh, exchange rewards. So basically you can either get these items to drop from a dungeon, which is really, really low chance for all of them, or you can do the dungeon enough times and get enough of these cores um, to uh, buy the accessory that you need. So, for our purposes, the ones that we're going to want to do uh, are the ones that give us these Hellion cores. Um, because Hellion cores uh, will let us buy the Sandstorm Temple Bracelet Chest. And once you buy that, you'll open it and you'll get this one. It'll be class specific. And you're going to need to open it with one of these divine or these unrefined bracelets. Um, you can get these unrefined bracelets from this girl over here, Mushin's Tower. Her name's Ka Chang. Kang Cha. Kang Cha, excuse me. And it's in this tab. And if you go down here, you'll see unrefined, whichever one you need. The one that we're going to, what we need to get these are the Young Sang prayer beads. And Young Sang prayer beads are uh, dropped from Mushin's Tower lore. 20? No, it's not 20, is it? Yeah, Mo okay, it is floor 20. So Mushin's Tower floor 20. It's not that difficult. I don't think it's even listed on the play infographic. Um. Okay, yeah, it is. It's not that difficult. You should be able to do it with the gear you have. Um. You might need to look up a guide for some of them cannons because Young Sang can be a little bit of a butthole. But um, <clears throat> in theory, you should have everything you need to do it. And uh, that's you're going to be a big DPS upgrade because this is the uh, bracelet that you'll have. And the one that you'll get by doing this is the tier above it. Um, so from there, that will be a nice DPS increase. The other things that Jinsore... Uh, that we're going to want to buy with these cores are going to be the Sky Reach gloves. These are a separate core. This is the Imperial core. This is on the next tier above dungeons, which you should be able to do now that you have your new bracelet and your other accessories. Um, and is this is the Shadowmoor Dream Song Theater and Brood Chamber. Um, generally, when you're uh, a new account, you're going to be sitting around 1400 AP. So these two out of these two 
out of three of the dungeons um, are in that recommended range. So you should be fine um, to get those. So you're going to want to get the Skyreach gloves as well as the um, on, uh, Conflux Impetus bracelet or belt chest. Uh, this belt is just way better than this one. It'll give you more defense. It'll be a nice, you know, nice little upgrade. You'll also get the set effect bonus with it. And, you know, it's not a big boost, but it's still a boost nonetheless. Um, then going on from there, so you're going to need about 400 of those. Um, but there are events usually that can give you uh, some of these. So you might only need to end up getting 200 for one of the, and only need to purchasing one of these. Um, the next one that you're going to want to go for is the Cathedral Cliffs Bracelet Chest. You need 250 of the Sovereign Cores. This is the tier above. Um, this is kind of later, but um, real, so realistically, the, what, what you should probably focus on while you still have the Aransu weapon is you're going to need, uh, you're going to want to go for the uh, Sandstorm Temple Bracelet Chest and the Skyreach Gloves. The rest you can do slowly but surely. And uh, you'll just need to know that this is here and this is something that you uh, can utilize because Jinsore um, is good through every single dungeon. Like this is the, these are high, um, the highest tier dungeons in the game right now. And you can exchange for them. They're expensive because, you know, they're the most recent stuff. But even so, you'll be able to do that. So Mushin's Tower here is full of solo dungeons and... Like I said, you're going to need to do, do two or three technically because you'll need to do one through seven every single day. Um, but you actually don't have to. If you go back to Chang here for, uh, she, for 30 silver, she'll give you a ticket to uh, start at the fifth floor of Mushin's Tower. So uh, you can skip doing five floors or four floors every single day. This is totally worth it, unless you want to go through it one time. I think you do have to go through it one time before you're able to purchase these. But, uh, yeah, definitely not bad. So you'll need to do that, and that will unlock floor 9. You'll need to do go through floor 9 once, 9 through 15, to uh, get the uh, to be able to unlock floor 16. And floor 16 through 20 is where you'll get these prayer beads that we just talked about. Um, that... You need 20 of them, and it will turn into the uh, the necklace, and the necklace will uh, let you buy the unrefined bracelet. I don't know exactly how much. I don't think the... Uh, yeah, there is no upgrade cost or anything like that. Um, you just open it with the specific bracelet, and you'll be fine. Um, but that's kind of the daily rotation, I would say, is you uh, do the... Final Training, Midnight Bummer's Dream, and uh, Coltrex Slayer, as well as whatever else you can do. Because um, the the Tier 3 reward is pretty good, but the Tier 5 one lets you select uh, between Dungeon Valuables and Raid Treasure Values. Um, they're a uh, nice little... Uh, uh, they're, they're just other currencies that you'll be able to... Uh, that you need... And you're also going to get this mat chest, which will give you more materials. This one specifically contains some of the sellable materials. So you can go in and sell those if you want more gold. Or you can transfer them and make them... Uh, you can transmit... Or, sorry. Uh, process them and make them into the materials you actually need to use to upgrade things. Uh, we've done... We've gotten... We've taken care of ring, earring, and bracelet. As well as belt and gloves. Necklace is should actually have been the uh, third thing I should have said to take care of because the necklace is actually a pretty big DPS boost as well. What you're going to be looking for is to get this Dark Storm necklace. The necklace you'll have is probably the is the Oath necklace, and this necklace comes from the Temple of Alluvium raid. Um, like I said, you'll just find it at some people recruiting for you in faction chat, and same thing goes. Most people already have this or they uh, need to, um, or maybe they'll need it for their alts, but if you want, you can PM your raid leader, and it should be fine for you to just pick it up. It drops from the first chest in the dungeon, I believe, 
uh, the first boss, Twinosaurus. So, um, don't worry too hard about getting this. It's a nice DPS increase, but definitely not super, super priority. Um, the best, the best and easiest things you need to upgrade will be your bracelet, earring, and ring. But necklace is the next tier. So once you have your necklace, ring, and earring, uh, then people will probably just let let you go into this. Um, because like I said, because you should should be sitting around here. Those upgrades should put you somewhere in here. Um, and especially if you, but if you need to, uh you know, get carried through or something, just ask someone in chat and, or, um, you know, people do it because, again, it's pretty easy as a dungeon, but um, it still gives a nice amount of gold, so people do it weekly as well. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. A uh, quick TLDR for people who have skipped or maybe forgot. When you first start off the game, all you're going to want to do is do yellow quests, orange quests when you get them, and purple quests when you get them. Those will give you the most levels, most experience, and your stamina increase, which will be very helpful for late game. Um, once you do that, you're going to want to find the quest to get to Moon Refuge, and you're going to want to do the daily that's there, as well as the other two dailies that give you martial tokens. The martial tokens we will be using to get the uh, weapon, soul badge, and mystic badge. Uh, you'll need 75 tokens in total, so it'll take you between 8 and 12 days to get those. Um, by doing all the quests. Any excess martial tokens you can use to buy transformation stone crystals or gems. Uh, that's really up to preference, but uh, that's uh, what I would recommend. Um, next, you should be doing weeklies whenever they come up. Uh, you get them by unlock, you unlock them by doing your orange quest. People are recruiting, just hit apply and hopefully they'll let you in. Um, and those are just going to be really easy dungeons that uh, just give you nice materials, nice gold, things like that. Um, in terms of daily challenge, you can do th between three and five. And uh, those are the ones that are the most value. And you should do the ones that are at or below uh, where you are in the J control J play infographic menu. Um, once you do that, you're going to want to do Skybreak Spire for your earring and ring. Um, and after that, you're going to want to do dungeons in order to try and get enough cores to trade for the uh, S Sandstorm Temple bracelet chest. And then uh, finally, you're going to want to do uh, Temple of Alluvium in order to upgrade your necklace. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you need any help, there's uh, links in the description below for the uh, class specific stuff I was talking about as well as uh, if you need any help please leave a comment and um, yeah or you can add me in game uh, any of my characters that's fine and uh, I'll try and do the best I can to help you so yeah thank you so much for watching I appreciate it and have a great day